Hey guys, we love to entertain and one of the easiest things to do for an appetizer is to make a cheese platter. There is no cooking involved and it always looks fancy. But you can take it up to the next level by making your own wooden board. Today I'm going to show you how to make the prettiest version and customize it to impress your guests. All right, so let me just start by saying this is one of those DIYs that did not go as planned. Um, I went to the hardware store, got all my supplies, was so excited to start, and I started to varnish my wood, and the fumes for it were just coming up. What do you think, Teddy? Yeah, that's a scary smell, huh? Fail. Duh, that stuff is not food safe, neither is the chalkboard paint I plan to use, so I had to start from scratch, do some research, some experimenting, but I finally landed on a way that's both food safe and pretty. To get started, you'll need some wood, sandpaper, a wood burning tool and some letters, mineral oil, and some handles. Okay, so the first step is to sand whatever wood you choose, and you wanna do that outside because it can get dusty. Start with a coarse grit sandpaper and move finer and finer. I ended on a 320. Make sure you get the edges, and I like to do both sides, that way I have two sides to my cheese board. And finally, make sure you wipe all the sawdust off with a cloth. Next up is staining your board, and this honestly depends on what kind of wood you end up getting. I found this beautiful redwood at the hardware store, and I love its color, so I'm gonna leave it as is. But if you do have a lighter piece of wood and you want that richer wood tone, you can make your own food-safe stain by mixing equal parts super strong coffee and balsamic vinegar. Just paint on three to four coats, letting it dry in between. Today I'm gonna to stick with the redwood, and I found this amazing wood-burning tool at the craft store. This thing is so awesome. You can do so many things with it. It also makes your house smell pretty good. Okay, so I'm heating this up. It comes with all sorts of different attachments, like, I don't know, it almost looks like a screwdriver, and if you're good at freehanding, go ahead and give that a try. I'm new to it, so I'm gonna stick with these letters and actually write cheese right across the bottom of it. It's been heating up for about four to five minutes. All right, so I'm going to use pliers to get the letters off because I'm assuming this is really hot. Don't feel like burning my fingers. And then I've got my H. Okay, and I'll wait for this to heat up before I apply it. I'm just waiting for it to smoke a little bit and then I'll carefully lift it off. The wood burning tool has a bunch of different settings. I'm using the hottest one because I love the seared effect. But if you just want it to be a slight imprint, try lower. All right guys, how awesome is this? I think it turned out so cute. And if you use the same cheeses every time, like Brie and Gouda, you could also just stamp these on. But I wanted to show you what I'm gonna do on the other side using my wood burning tool. I'm gonna grab it and a stencil and then trace it with a pencil. Using a ruler to guide my finest tip of my wood burning tool, I'm gonna trace the outline. And I got lucky and the ruler fit around this curve. And then I'm gonna go back in with a fatter tip to give a really burned effect. All right, now that our decorations are on our board, it is time to seal it up. And I tried a few different food safe options. I tried mineral oil and I love that sheen. Tongue oil was also cool, but it does come from a nut, so it's not safe if you have a nut allergy. And finally, I tried this product called Good Stuff. It was very cool, but didn't really have a great effect. So I'm going to stick with the mineral oil today, which is also, by the way, the cheapest option. I've got a lint-free cloth and I'm going to dab it into my mineral oil and then just rub it on my board. And it is best to go in the direction of your wood grain. Sealing your board is not only gonna change the color, but it also make it last longer. This is called curing your board. They do it for salad bowls and tongs, things like that. And you wanna do this maybe about two times and let it dry in between. Now I'll just set it in the sun to dry. All right, my cutting board is dry and this final step is optional but adds a really cool touch and that is to add handles. I have these black ones but you can use brass or silver, whatever you like. Um, you can put them right on top. I'm not gonna do that because if you remember, I did for my cutting board both sides so I'm gonna put them on the side and that way I can flip it around. All right, so even though it took a few times to get it right, I am so happy with how these turned out. I love that you can make them in different sizes and even shapes. They look great plain or personalized. And I did make one with chalkboard paint. I couldn't resist and I just put parchment paper under each piece of cheese to keep things safe. So let me know in the comments below if there are any other food DIYs you'd like to see and I'll catch you next time. Bye guys. Not great with my drill you guys, but we're gonna try.
Okay, this may be the most satisfying thing I've ever done. 